going to continue talking about bifurcation theory. Uh, in particular, I want to talk about this concept of what are called normal forms, uh, imperfections, and also, you know, just what this means in terms for us in thinking about real systems where we have changes in behavior, changes in dynamics as a function of parameters, and how can we characterize those. So that's what bifurcation theory is going to do. And in, in fact, this idea of a normal form is, is this idea that there are only a certain class of instabilities that actually exist in dynamic systems, and these are called the normal forms. And so one of the things you'd like to really do in understanding your system is first get its normal form, bifurcation, out. And that gives you a great deal of insight to what's actually driving the physics and the instability itself. And then the question is, how well do these bifurcations hold up uh, under perturbation? Are they structurally stable? And we'll talk about that in the context of what are called imperfect bifurcations. So in the last lecture, we talked about this. There's a, you know, just dx dt equals f of x and mu. Mu is our parameter, and the dynamics changes as a function of mu. So that's the idea behind what we have and what we're considering so far, is that mu, uh, as you move around in mu, if you have control of that, you get fundamental changes in the behavior of the dynamics of that system. Okay? And that's wherever that transition happens in the behavior, that's called a bifurcation point. And that, critical, that value of mu that does that is really important to know. Okay? So what we want to do is we, we actually studied this equation last time. And what I showed you last time in the last lecture is that there, was f there are four different examples I walked through. There was the saddle node that took this form here. There's a transcritical, which takes this form here. There's the pitchfork bi bifurcation that goes like this, and the Hopf. And these are the dominant and major bifurcations that occur in almost any system. They are these canonical forms, or what are called the normal forms, or oftentimes called the universal unfoldings of the bifurcation structure. And it can come down oftentimes into these four forms. There are other forms, but these are the dominant paradigms that exist. In most systems, this is what you're going to get. The Hoff is the one where the bifurcation shows you some periodic dynamics on the backside. The pitchfork is when you get a bistable, po two positive branches that arise. Uh, the transcritical is just a switch from one solution branch to another. And the saddle node is, is, is that structure where you go from a top branch to a bottom branch and it's unstable. Now, of course, you've got to like, surely my dynamics that I'm considering are not that simple, right? So uh, these are very simple forms, and my differential equation or my, my dynamical system is much more complex. And so what I want to show you is, in fact, but underneath there, when you look near the bifurcation point, these are the canonical forms. So I'm going to show an example of that. So these, nor these universal form unfoldings or normal forms, we can find them for different systems. Okay? So they don't have to look in that form, but they take that form near the unfolding or near the bifurcation point. So let me take this as an example. Here's a differential equation, dx dt minus x, x squared minus 2x minus mu. So first of all, this equation is not in the form of any of those I showed you. The transcritical, the Hoff, the pitchfork, uh, it's not in this form. This is some new differential equation. And generically, we'll consider it in, in its own right. So what do we do with differential equations here? What we're going to do here is, again, we're going to look at, in fact, equilibrium solutions. And the steady state solutions is where dx dt is 0. And here's where they are. This is, it satisfies x0, x0 squared minus 2x0 minus mu is equal to 0. So what I find is, in fact, three branches of solutions. I have x0 equals to 0, and I have this branch, which is 1 plus 1 plus square root mu, and 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus square root mu. Okay? So I have these three solution branches, and what I'd really like to do is in investigate their stability and how the behaviors change as a function of mu. So I can do that by doing a perturbation expansion. So just expand around the equilibrium solution. x is equal to x0 plus x tilde. And here is your linearized equations. So what you find here is depending upon where x0 sits, this constant here in front of the x tilde will either be positive or negative. And if it's positive, right, this is going to be growth. If it's negative, it's going to be decay. 
It's as simple as that. The stability is determined by this coefficient here, which depends upon x naught and mu. Okay? And so we can actually calculate that, expand around. And what we're going to do is expand around a couple of interesting points. One is we're going to expand around the origin. At the origin, in fact, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to, I'm going to show you this, what this looks like here. This is going to be, so here's one of the solution branches up top. That's the 1 plus 1 square root of 1 plus mu. Here's the second branch, 1 minus the 1 minus uh, square root of mu. And then here's the 0 solution. And notice that they intersect here, and there's a turning point there. So what I'm going to do is look around this region right there. The origin, where two branches of solutions intersect. This branch, this bottom branch of solutions, and the zero branch of solutions. And so what I'm going to do is come back to here and say, perturb around there and ask the question, what happens if I have a solution near there? I plug it into my governing equations. I expand. And here's what's kind of interesting. And this gets just to the point to the universal unfoldings. I now not only expand x and say x is equal to 0 plus x tilde, I also now expand my bifurcation parameter around that region where those two solution branches intersect. So mu will be 0 plus mu tilde. And so these are both small. I can plug these into my governing equations, and I keep the dominant terms. I throw away everything else that's small, and the dominant terms give me this equation here dx tilde dt is equal to mu x plus 2x squared. Now, because mu is small and x is small, this is about the same size as this. But notice the form of this is exactly in the form of a transcritical bifurcation. That is the canonical form. That is the normal form. So when I expand the given dynamical system near the bifurcation point, I get this specific normal form, which is a transcritical bifurcation. So given that, what we know happens at a transcritical bifurcation is you get a switch in stability. One solution branches loses stability. The other one gains stability at the intersection point. That's canonical for a transcritical bifurcation. We worked that whole example out in the last lecture. Nothing else can happen. There's just a switch in stability. I can also expand around that fold point. That fold point was at 1 minus 1. In other words, x was 1 and mu was minus 1. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say, well, x was 1 plus a little bit. So I'm expanding, looking nearby. And mu was negative 1 plus a little correction. I plug that in. And again, keep only the dominant terms. And the dominant balance terms gives you this here. The x dt is equal to mu tilde minus x tilde squared. Those are the dominant terms. And this is a saddle node bifurcation. So in other words, when I do these expansions of this more complex differential equation, near each of the bifurcation points, it always is going to come down into one of those normal forms. Whether it's a saddle, a pitchfork, a, um, a transcritical, or a Hoff. That's sort of the, that's why they're called universal unfoldings. When I do an asymptotic analysis near the bifurcation point, it comes out in one of these canonical forms. So let's go back to the picture. So what I just showed is I did an analysis near this point here, and I showed you that this thing collapses into the normal form of a, of, of a, of a saddle point. I also did it here, and it collapses in the form of a transcritical. So now what I did is I made this graphic where the s on the branch means stable, the u means unstable, and it's also a dotted line. So what you see is the complete structure of the bifurcation diagram. I have a stable branch of solution, which is 0. At the point mu equals 0, x equals 0, this branch of solution goes unstable. And it transitions to the stability. It gives the stability over to this branch of solutions, which is now stable. So right there, it's a transcritical where I get a transfer of stability. This unstable branch up here folds over, and the stability switches. 
That's it. That's the whole picture of this thing. Now, there's a couple interesting features about this dynamics. Notice that this branch here is stable. This branch is stable down here, and it's separated by this unstable branch. So, you know, you could imagine this actually happens in many physical systems, what are called bistabilities in the system. If I can change the mu, I can start mu marching along here on the zero solution. I can go here, I can switch over to here, or if I could perturb it up into this region, just above here, make it jump up to this branch, and then I can walk down over here. And so for a given value of mu, I have two possible solution branches that are both stable. They're separated by an unstable solution, but I could have this idea of bistability in the system. Okay? Same thing over here. I have a stable branch down here, stable branch up here, separated by this unstable branch. Okay, so this is the idea, though. Near the bifurcation points, though, I have these universal unfoldings. The normal form here is a saddle. The normal form there is a transcritical. And so you can take a more complicated uh, dynamical system, and near the bifurcation point, you do the expansion to classify what kind of bifurcation or what kind of normal form you're going to have. Okay? That's the way this, this works. What's the universal unfolding? of the dynamics near there. Let's do another example. And this is going to be the Lorenz equations. Here it is. So this is the Lorenz equations. And now this is a nonlinear equation that produces these very interesting behaviors of chaotic dynamics. Okay? Uh, but before that happens, you know, there's a parameter here that we vary uh, initially for this parameter. It's the, the origin is stable. And then once you get the parameter above a certain value, it goes unstable. And the question is, what kind of instability is that? Okay. So what we're going to do is actually perturb around this. And this is going to be the parameter uh, rho r here. As, as r gets big, this thing goes under, undergoes a bifurcation. So r is the fundamental parameter. That's the bifurcation parameter. For r less than some critical value, the origin is stable. It's the only fixed point. For r above a uh, uh, above a critical value, now you get multiple solution branches, and the origin becomes unstable. So the question is, what kind of instability is it? You can do this same kind of normal form expansion, expand about the origin. With corrections, we introduce a slow time scale. We absolutely introduce even epsilon as square root of r minus 1. So again, that's the bifurcation parameter. And we can actually, I'm just rescaling everything and giving you a summary of this calculation because you, you can work it through. It's a little bit more complicated. But the end of the day is when you do this calculation with these rescalings, what you find when you do an expansion near the bifurcation point is this right there. That the evolution equation is some constant a minus a cubed. The canonical form that this is taking is a pitchfork bifurcation. So it's exactly what happens for this parameter r. The origin is a stable point, tracks everything. As you increase r, you go through a pitchfork bifurcation. Okay? So the origin is no longer stable. And there you go. That's, so, you've, so the Lorenz equation has a universal unfolding or a normal form for its initial bifurcation, which is a pitchfork. OK. Just want to highlight that there. The only other concept I want to bring to your attention is this idea of what are called imperfect bifurcations. So what happens if I actually perturb these forms of a solution? So here's a, for instance here, this is a transcritical bifurcation. But now I've added a little bit of plus delta. So I've perturbed the equation. I've to, to perturbed the normal form. And then the question is, those bifurcations, that transcriptal bifurcation, is it actually stable? Does it persist even as I perturb the actual structure of this equation? And I'm going to show you what happens here. You can perturb this, and it actually will, in fact, break the bifurcation structure. So we first look, again, here now at equilibrium solutions. There it is. This set this to 0. But now the equilibrium solutions, before, they were very simple. x equals 0 and x equals mu. But now, here's the form of the solutions. They're more com complicated, right? You can still solve for them, right? But that's what x naught is. And then you'd have to calculate 
the stability of those branches. And here's what's very interesting. Depending upon whether delta is positive or negative, you get things like this. So if delta is positive, so underneath here are the two solution branches for the transcritical. This is the line x equals mu, right down this diagonal, and x equals to 0. If delta is positive, you break that structure. And what you find is a stable branch that goes like this now and an unstable branch that is down here. They no longer intersect. You just get two solution branches that don't intersect. If delta is negative, you get these two solution branches. It breaks this way. So here's your stable branch. There's a saddle there. Folds over here, and it's unstable. Stable up here unstable there, and there's this region in here where the solution no longer exists anymore. Okay? So this is what happened under this structural perturbation. You broke the bifurcation structure that initially was there. Okay? So this is called an imperfect bifurcation. We can also do this for the pitchfork. In the pitchfork, you know, the steady, we can look at steady state solutions of the pitchfork. Remember, it's dx dt is equal to this here, but now this delta is here, which is going to give us a, a more interesting solution branches, uh, just like we did for the transcritical. And in fact, I'm just going to give you a summary of the possibilities that can happen. So I've already shown you this here. This is what happens to the transcritical. Here's what can happen to the pitchfork. There's four scenarios here. You can break it in this way here. So now the solution is this top branch. And then I have this bottom branch and this top branch which is unstable. The unstable branches are dotted lines. The stable are solid lines. So you can break it this way or you can break it this way. It depends. It depends on, on the symmetry considerations, delta positive or negative. You can also break it this way. So now, just like I broke this in two distinct ways, I can now break this one here in sort of four ways. You can break it to look like this or you can break it to look like that. So these imperfect bifurcations are important because they actually break your normal form, right? You could perturb a system in such a way that it will no longer go through your standard pitchfork bifurcation, transcritical bifurcation. It can just do things like this. Your solution branch here, for instance, in this transcritical, there is no bifurcation. With that delta in there, you just kind of walk up that solution branch. It's one solution branch. There's no transition from one branch to another. You could also break it like this, where it's like I was walking along and there's no solution out here, right? I have, there's this region, a forbidden region, and then I get over here to a solution branch. So no equilibrium solutions in this middle region. So you see these imperfections or these perturbations to the normal form can play a big role. And in fact, you can think about engineering ways to break it so that you can either avoid bifurcations or make it do something else that you want it to do. So that's the kind of a, a concept as well. So, uh, so overall, the way we want to think about these bifurcations are that in a lot of systems, almost all of them, the, most of them are going to reduce down to one of the four forms I gave you, whether it's a pitchfork, a transcritical, a Hopf bifurcation. Uh, these are sort of these canonical mechanisms driving instabilities in a system as a function of some kind of underlying parameter. And we really want to understand the fundamental nature of the kind of onset of instability that comes next. So what we're going to see in the next set of lectures, we're going to talk all about pattern forming systems. At the, the very base of all those pattern forming systems is this idea of the normal form and universal unfoldings. We're going to have parameters that when we change those parameters, it's going to make the system go unstable. And the, what we're going to see come out of that system in this unstable regime are patterns that evolve that are directly related to what your underlying normal form tells you is going to happen. So that's where we're going to go next with this. And, and so you have to really understand sort of these bifurcation structures and instabilities that it can occur and the normal forms that are associated with them.